the bread of sorrow, for it is given to his beloved. Amen. Sleep. Amen. He's letting us know, amen, that you're going to sit up all night worried about something you can't fix. Y'all better talk back to me. You are all night worried about something you can't fix. You are all day worried about something, amen, that you cannot have no control over. You got to understand that this body is the temple of Christ. And when this body gets sick, you got to call on the maker. Can I get a witness here? When this body gets sick or no, you got to call on the maker. Don't you know that if God knows every hair that's on your hair, whether it's your hair or somebody else's hair, he knows how many hairs are up there. And if he knows how many, don't you know that he can take care of you and your situation? Present your bodies. Present your house. Somebody say, my house. My house is the temple of Christ. My house is the house that I want God to come in. You know how it is sometimes, amen. Company come unexpectedly and you run into the kitchen, amen, and start throwing the dishes up. But Jesus says, I'm coming to your house. And when I come to your house, amen, he says, I'm going to come as a thief in the night. Meaning that one day, God's going to show up in your house and knock on the door. Amen. And you're not going to have time to sweep the floor. Pick the dirty clothes off the floor. Put the dishes in the dishwasher or get the dishes. No, no. That's not time. You're not going to have time. So he said, get your house in order and do it right now. You are working on your own individual building. Like Pastor King said, and I quote, he reached that sermon. Amen. Don't, don't know Pastor King. He's right there on the wall behind me. He preached a sermon. Hold up your corner. How many of y'all remember that sermon? Amen. Pastor King said, hold up your corner. He said, if you hold up your corner, if you hold up your corner, I hold up my corner, you hold up your corner, then we all hold up the Christ. The building of Christ has corners to it. That's why Jesus said, I am the chief cornerstone that the builders have rejected. Don't let them reject Jesus. For if we rise up in the morning, sit up late, get out. Stop worrying about stuff that you can't fix. Amen. Turn it over to King Emmanuel. Amen. Let him work it out. Yeah, we all got problems. We're all struggling. But we got to get to the mindset, my brothers and sisters, that God is our soul. Jesus is the lover of our soul. And the Holy Ghost will lead and guide us from one good degree of grace to another. And I'm almost finished. And then he says in verse 3, amen. Lo, children are the inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of the room is his reward. Amen. What we're trying to say, Solomon is saying that if you have no children in your building that are not doing anything, your church is going to die. If the children in your ministry are not being trained, if they're not being edified, they're not learning anything. If your teenagers and your young women are not learning how to take care of themselves, amen, and to deal with their life choices and young men, amen, it is our responsibility to let them know that their bodies are the temple of Christ. And when you say no, sisters, you mean no. Because he says, Jesus says, amen, to, to Solomon, he says, look, he says, in order for the house to survive, it's got to have some children running through the garden. There's got to be children in the yard, got to be children in the house, got to be children that are willing to learn, amen, that when it's our turn, amen, to sit in the back, amen, and see that we have trained them, amen, to take our spot, I asked the Lord yesterday, please send me somebody to take my place. Amen. I know I'm not going to be here long. Amen. I didn't come to stay. But I said, Lord, send me somebody, amen, that I can work with right now, that when it's my time, amen, to retire. Yes, I want to retire. I don't want to do this all the time, every day. I love y'all, but I'm going back to South Carolina. Amen. If she say so. <laughs> now, now on the understanding is, is that Solomon is saying that you have to train your children. Train 
them to take your place. And so, if you're in a ministry that won't let children do anything, that ministry is going to die. It's got to die. It won't survive. And so you have to give them an opportunity. Almost to the close. Verse 4, as the arrows in the hand of the mighty man saw the children of the roof. He, he said that one day, amen, the same children that you look, amen, a couple of minutes ago, amen, they're going to be the one that's going to have the upper hand. They're going to be the ones, amen, that are going to have the strength to keep this ministry going, amen, while we're trying to make it up them stairs, while we get ready to get on the elevator that God's going to bless us with, amen. You'll be comforted to know, amen, that one of these children behind me, one of these young boys that's out here might be your next pastor. Amen. They might be the next evangelist. They might be the next Sunday school teacher. And we have to teach them, except the Lord build a house, they that build it, labor in vain. Almost done. Amen. Verse number five, we get ready to go home. He says, happy is the man that has his quiver full of them, that they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. We, brethren, amen, have the, uh, how can I put it so lightly and gently, amen. It is our responsibility, my brothers, amen, to protect the house of prayer. It is our responsibility to check and to kill, I mean, any enemy that comes to the gate that will suffer and try to get to our women and our children. That's what he's talking about. In order for this house to survive, we as men, we as fathers, we as brothers and uncles, we have got to take a stand, amen, against the wild of the devil and to be able to protect not only our own personal house, but we got to protect this house. It is our responsibility to take care of our own house first, and when we take care of home, then we come to this church. This is where we as men have fallen shot. I'm not going to use the word fail, because there is no failure in God. This is where we come short. We have allowed through history, amen, to allow, amen, through history, amen, where through slavery and all of that, that we have been disenfranchised, we have been pushed to the side, and our women have been made the front, amen, and we have been in the back for so long, we've gotten so comfortable, that's how they got us, but it's now time, my brothers, amen, that we grab our women and tell our women, get behind us, amen, and allow us of the sea and the wind and all that happened. Then and only then will this ministry in this house explode. It will take the men of this ministry in order to set this house in order. The women can't do it. You hear me? Now ladies, don't get me wrong. We appreciate everything but it's not your place. God says to the man, it is our responsibility to get this house in order. And so when you come in here and you look around, amen, and you see the paint chilling, and, and you see the women's bathroom, you see the men's bathroom, you see the carpet, you see this, it is our responsibility. And the responsibility begins with who? It begins with me. As Harry Truman said, the book stops here. And so that's why we say we as men have got to stand up and do what God wants us to do to this building. Women like to see men working on stuff. Can I get a witness? Y'all like to see us working on stuff. I'm going to put on my muscle shirt. No, I ain't. Show off my flab and all that other stuff while I'm hammered, amen. But there was a time my grandfather would tell me in 1948 when they put up the Liberty Hill Baptist Church that all they had to do, amen, was ring a bell. Come on, somebody. All they had to do was ring a bell, and the bell will be heard all through the woods. And 
and the men would get in their cars, in their truck, walk down the road and come to the church and say, somebody rung the bell. What do you want the men to do? They raised up a church without any help from any white man. They laid the foundation. They put the roof on the church. They put the carpet in the church. They put the pews in the church. They put the air conditioning and the heat in the church. And brethren, Except the Lord build a house. Mm 